Hey everybody, welcome to Wood Chat for August 14th, 2013. I'm Matt Grabwall from Uppercut Woodworks. You can find me on the web over at uppercutwood.com and on Twitter at uppercutwood. If you're watching the video and you want to jump into the text chat, head over, head over to uppercutwoodworks.com slash woodchat slash chatroom. Sign in with your Twitter account and you are good to go. Uh, Chris Wong from Flair Woodworks um, isn't available to co-host with us tonight. But Mr. Scott Meek is here as always. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Howdy, howdy. How so, you doing, uh, I'm doing pretty good. I actually did woodworking this weekend, so I'm very happy about it. It was a simple project, but sometimes when you aren't getting a lot of woodworking time, starting a big project is a bad idea. Oh, yeah. Um, you got to get back into it. So doing some small ones, <clears throat> you actually can finish them so you feel good. And... Um, I find that when I do a big project and I have to do it, like if I did a 40-hour woodworking project in two-hour increments spread over many weeks, yeah. it ends up being an 80-hour project because you forget where you left off and blah, blah, blah. So um, and it was cool. It was a money-making project, and it was for uh, an old church, which was good. So, And I got to use some very nice CVG fur that was quarter sawn. So cool. it was very cool. So what's been going on with you? You have something special in going on right now. You are not at home. I'm not at home. I'm not in my shop, as you can see. This is a, a cheap hotel <laughs> hotel room in in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, aka worst state ever. <laughs> um, sorry, Mi Michigan versus Ohio State uh, rivalry yeah. going on there. So, um, any Ohio people, I apologize. It's not you, unless you're an Ohio State fan. But then, you know. <laughs> no, I am. Uh, I'm in Ohio and uh, been. I'm hanging out at the popular woodworking headquarters and filming a DVD on making wood-bodied hand planes, laminated-style hand planes. So we just finished day one today, and uh, looks like we'll probably wrap it up tomorrow. Cool. And the DVD will be in stores, do we know when, for holiday? I, I have no idea. I don't know if it will be that soon or not. I'm not sure. So. Cool. Uh, um, I'll have more details, hopefully, by the end of it here. So. And don't you have a picture about that? Yeah, actually, uh, Megan uh, Fitzpatrick came in and, and snapped a picture right while we were getting ready to, to start shooting. I'll, uh, I'll share it here. Okay. Well, here's here's a picture she took. And just I don't know if I even knew she was taking it, but um, yeah, she threw that up there as we were just getting everything set and ready to go. I was I was getting my my plane blade set on the, the planes I was going to use for the shoot. So kind of fun. That's on their on their set. They got quite a neat little, little studio in there. And what you don't see in this picture is all well, you can see one of the yeah the boom cameras over overhead there, but. It was kind of fun. That's uh, cool. So, yeah. that, so is that is that like a that that um, wall hanging cabinet with tools on it looks like a prop. It doesn't look. Yeah, it's. Well, I don't know if I'm I'm allowed to you know. Yeah, yeah, break yeah. the uh, break actually the barrier. real work in this studio. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's definitely a studio. So that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Right on. So yeah. a three-day venture might turn into a two-day venture, which is going to turn into a DVD that people can find in their stores about how to make a wood wood-bodied hand plane. Yeah. Starring you. Yeah, it's it's basically the same thing I, I do with in the in the classes I offer. Uh, obviously, the DVD is not going to have my one-on-one -on -one, uh, holding your hand through it kind of deal. But um, yeah, it should be chock full of good information and hoping hoping it's good. The the first few uh, first few scenes were a little rough, getting used to being on camera and getting over tongue tied, you know, all that good stuff. So it's a whole lot different on that than something on WoodChat or teaching class or something. So, but I guess everyone that, everyone goes through it. Yeah, at least with that, you, if you screw up, you can edit it out, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So when people buy this uh, DVD, do you know like, are they going to get all the resources on like where to get a blade and yeah, get that can buy or anything like that? Um, we talked a little bit about that. I'm not sure where what it's going to go, but the 
the blades that I use from Hawk will be referenced on there. Cool. Um, for for what it's worth, the blades that I use on my on my planes are the Hawk uh, PL two hundreds. It's a four two inch wide by four and a half inch long uh, craft blade assembly with a cap iron. So right on. Um, if everybody was interested in that, so so that information will be on there. You know what materials you need. And, um, kits are an interesting idea. That's that might be something that uh, that I should talk to them about offering as a as an upgrade or something. So yeah, we'll see. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll bring that up tomorrow. Cool. Right on. So um, that's what you've been up to. Um, any yeah. projects besides planes lately? Uh, no, because. Um, Leading up to coming up here has just been nonstop making planes for the the super secret yeah. batch of planes that I'm working on that hasn't been announced yet. So cool. Um, yeah, I, I didn't get them to the point that I'm that I wanted them. I was supposed to get finish on the first batch of them before I left, and it didn't happen. So gotcha. So I've got a lot of work when I get back. <laughs> right on. Um, hey, Tim Charles, who's going to be we're going to be going over his design. He is on his way back to the firehouse to join in, so he says less than ten minutes. So okay, um, I forgot. He, yeah, he's a he's a firefighter, isn't he? Full yeah, time. yeah. So he could be in the middle of chat and just say, "See you later. I gotta go." Yep. Um, Sorry. Cool. All right. Well, why don't we um, why don't we start looking at Tim's design and then we can have him walk us okay. through, um, when he gets here. Yeah, I have not seen it yet. So okay, so let's do the. I'll do the progression first. Um, let me just get the screen share going here. Uh, I think I want that one. Yep, that's the one I want. So let me just click on that. All right, so you can see up at the top here. Um, that's the slideshow, but here we go. Starting with Chris's on top, um, then my lame change, which was very minimal. Getting down to Vic's change, which uh, Vic basically printed this out and did a did a sketch by hand, which is great. Um, incorporating cur some curves and some flares, kind of getting away from the, the straight lines and the angular stuff. Um, then Scott, there's your design, which I really I really liked. You, you kind of kept Vic's legs, but you um, and the and the curved trays, but you moved to a drawer on the bottom, and then I really like the way you did the stretchers on the top. Yeah, th this far in, I'm still I'm still really pleased with with that. I think I changed the top a little bit, but yeah, I'm still really happy with it. I really I really like that one. Um, I also like Greg's. I do too. Uh, a lot. Um, I think the legs look look pretty cool. Um, and then Megan's, which is um, similar to Greg's in, from a leg standpoint, she changed. Um, she she added color, which is awesome, mm -hmm. and um, really thickened the sides of the top. Then we get to Diami, who it looks like it's very organic and almost one piece. Um, so I like Diami. I like I like all of these actually. Um, so then we get to Brian's. Um, Brian has two tops, so you still get the same effect, but they're they're the I guess you call it the inner or lower top is is floating, and no matter which angle you look at this from, you're gonna see you're gonna see curves in either the inner legs or the outer legs, which is pretty cool. Another yeah. hand another hand sketch, uh, which is cool. Then last week we talked to Jay, and Jay went away from the went away from the curves. Uh, and he added the the um, what do we call them, those pegs between the two tops? Yeah. Um, but another, I think that's only our second person that's ever added color or materials uh, in their sketch. So this we week talked here's, a lot about uh, walnut. Yeah, I talked a lot about walnut and how these front corners here would probably be the weak point if you were to put weight on them. Yeah. Or lean your elbow on them or something. Um, so here's here's Tim's. So now I'll show a zoomed in uh, version of Tim's. A bigger version of Tim's. Let's see here. 
if it exists in my full screen menu, which I don't think it is right now. <laughs> Try this. Yep, here we go. Okay, so you can see that? Yeah. So Tim did another, oh, cool. hand, Tim did another hand sketch. Um, 40 inches wide, 20 inches deep, 9 inch wide sides. Um, so I think that means the, the, the upper top sides are 9 inches wide each. Um, he brought back the a lot of the uh, detail from the original top where there's that um, oh he brought the yeah the looks like in the front view here he brought the drop he brought the drop yeah. back uh, added drawers on the side of the drop that looks sharp yeah it does it looks pretty cool um, and then he did a side view here um, from the side it looks like a pretty traditional piece of furniture but from the front it obviously has that has that drop. There's no back view, so I don't know um, what the back view yeah. looks like. But, um, drop center for computer, back of back of drop center, left open. Okay, I got it. I got yeah, it. I was just going to say, that's what it looks like that the drop goes all the way to the back, and then there's a ledge over the, over the back. Mm -hmm. So you could put a flat screen monitor on top of that, your keyboard, it sits low. Yeah. And then you got a riser on the side for your paperwork and stuff. Yeah. Now, even though he used pencil, he did shade... He made the top much darker. Mm -hmm. um, he made the inner top a little bit shaded. And then when you look on the side view, the legs aren't shaded, uh, but the aprons and the vertical pieces are shaded. So yeah, looks like he's making this three species. Three, yeah, three three species here, which is pretty cool. That's Square cool. legs that are tapered, two inch wide slats, and it's all all mortise and tenon. So um, so this so I like the fact that people are participating and they don't feel like they have to learn CAD. Which I think yeah, is um, I like seeing the hand drawn ones. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the hand drawn hand drawn ones are, are very cool. It's interesting to see the curves come and go, uh, and the top come and go. Which you know, it's it's I don't know if it's because either people are either liking the top from a design perspective or not liking it, or or if they're deciding, I don't know how I would construct this, so I'm going to remove it. Um, so yeah. we, can, we can ask we can ask Tim when he gets here though. I th I think Tim's version of the top may with with having a top that has got the drop in it may yeah. be one of the easier assembly types because it it doesn't yeah. have a curve to it it's just got a a, a, a slant so that's not yeah. so bad. Yeah, and it's open in the it's open in the back but it's not open on the sides so you you have storage with the drawers. There isn't a rail under those drawers, so those drawers are obviously connected to those to those top pieces. Yeah. Um, you know, and the other thing I guess I, and there's the other thing I just noticed, there's nothing across the back. In that front view, you don't see anything. If you look at the side view, there's not a similar set of aprons and stretchers across the back. Yeah. So I'm wondering. Do you have a, do you have a link back. to the? You have a link to the to the design. Yeah, I'll do it. I put one on Twitter a while ago, but I should probably refresh it here. Hey, Diami. He says he he's watching between writing and uploading. Between what? Uploading. Oh, writing and uploading. Between writing and uploading. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, Scott, what do you think? Would this thing rack side to side without a back stretcher? I'd be worried. I don't know. So I, was, oh, I was wanting to see it again. I'm not yeah. seeing it pop up yet. Um, I don't know. I guess it kind of depends on how he's got the the, the drawers, that transition between the side and the and the legs and the drawers. Mm -hmm. In the top, um, you know, because he's got some nice beefy connections in the corners, so you're basically creating nice corner joints, and it it could do the same thing. Because I would assume there's got to be a back on the on the drawers at least. 
There's got to be a back on the drawers. Um, because how, how I'm there looking isn't at a back, it, but... there isn't a back across the center because we know that's open. Yeah. And there's no lower. There's no lower stretcher. Yeah. Well, I have how to... I'm looking at it is he's got um, where you see in the drawer fronts, mm -hmm. and then there's a box that's that's hanging off of the top and yep. connected between the legs. Yeah. And then in that box that's the drawer. Little piston fit drawer or something. Yep. And then, um, so you could you could create your structure there. Yeah, that the box will definitely help, um, especially if it's a tied tied to those upper side aprons and the top. You're 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 essentially creating a very a very strong corner, right? Um, yeah, that's my thought. There is no back view. I wonder. I wonder if he. Had, I wonder if he does have a design for the back. It's just not. It's just not in here. So. Um, people Did you share like, it again? I'm. I'm not seeing it. Oh, when you shared it again, it didn't come up on the wood chat. Oh yeah, the word, you didn't that, have the tag. That, to. that takes a while to refresh. Um, here, I'll put it in the um, G plus chat for you. So I'm wondering if, I, if there's a back view that we're not seeing that shows more detail. Um, people people are so far liking the drawers a lot. Um, yeah, it's got a it's got a really uh, unique look. Yeah. Um, I would be tempted to make that uh, wedge triangle in between the drawers and the um, the drop top. Mm -hmm. um, I would set maybe set back the drawer faces a couple inches, and have them yeah. actually match that that triangle. Yeah, I can see that. That would be pretty cool. Cause, and then if you did poles that were very um, kind of hidden, you wouldn't necessarily know they were drawers. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. The way this is drawn right now, you, it could it could very easily, and I don't know if this sound weird, mm -hmm. um, because it, it's not at all Art Deco, but it feels like it could go in an Art Deco direction really quickly. Like, just yeah. imagining that drawer with that slant on it, and you could add some steps. Yeah, but the side almost looks mission, doesn't it? Yes, the side looks very mission. Side looks like a Morris chair side, almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, it could be very cool. Uh, you could also, you could also go green and green on this. Yep. Um, I think there's a lot of a lot of cool potential in here. Jeremy yep. Morgan says maybe a wide back apron that would create a back behind the drawers to help prevent racking. Yeah, I think so too. Um, if you did, if you did um, the drawer fronts that had a wedge shape on them, so that they fit, you could do a similar thing across the back, that, that where they didn't actually open, but they tied into the drop top, and so you'd essentially have a structure across the back for a nice wide apron. Right. Um, and that way, it would look the same from front and back. Which could be pretty cool, because you wouldn't need you, if you you could do it where you didn't need pulls. You just you just pull from the bottom of the drawer. Yeah, that could be. I kind of like that direction actually. Yeah, I, I think I think Tim did a great job. I'm 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 excited to see. It has a lot of potential um, for the next step again. Yeah. So it it just kind of lends itself to a yeah to a reinterpretation again. And that's not to detract from Tim. That's not saying that Tim didn't do a good job. It's just, it's just kind I of. Think it, I think it actually says that Tim did a great job because yep. a lot of different yep. directions you could take this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's got a good basis. Eric is next. He can't join us tonight. Um, Andy Brownell is is next after that, or Peter Franks is next after that, and Andy Brownell. So, I think this could I think this could go a really cool, a really cool direction. Yeah. Jeremy says, I wonder what it would look like if the supports for the lower surface were vertical and provided support for the drawer, too, instead of angling them. Yeah, I, you know, I kind of like the angle. Hoops uh, is not updating for me right now. It's so. not? Yeah, I think, I, I, think there's a, I think the Internet is broken. <laughs> uh, originally, Google Plus would not give me an embed code for the video, so I had to do some shenanigans to get that. To get that to happen. Well, I'll I'll try our our chat room and see if it's yeah, what's popping up there. Um, 
I don't know if uh, if many of the of our Twitter uh, crew knows Peter Franks at all, but I'm really excited to see what he does with it too. Mm. Um, Peter's a really neat guy and and uh, really fascinating guy. Um, I don't know if he hangs out on Twitter at all, but uh, yeah, he's it'll it'll be a neat, interesting twist, I think, when he does. He's that. on the um, talk festival forums, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, he he married a girl from Ohio. Oh really? Yeah. So be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, Tim, where are you, buddy? I'm probably cleaning off the fire truck or something. Yeah, walking the Dalmatian. So it's interesting to see how this, after G, after Brian, Brian had curves not only in the legs but in the top, uh, in the edge profile of the top. Um, then Jay took it to very straight and angular, and Tim kind of stuck with the straight and angular a little bit which in many ways goes back to the original design on the straight and angular. Yeah, I was just going to say, let's we should pull up uh, Chris's original design again. Sure. And, and just compare the two. I, I just like, I always like doing that from first to last again. Um, let's see here. What's the best way for me to do that? I'll do this. Oh, no, don't want to do that. That's infinite. Hey, it's a never-ending... Uh... That's the infinite screen share problem. <laughs> Try again, Google. You just created a black hole somewhere. Yeah. I created a singularity. So, evening, Bill Griggs. Hey, Bill's here. I haven't seen Bill in a while. Um, so here's Chris's original design on the top. So you can see the angle of the drop top. Yeah. Um, he's got a curve in the side aprons, which I thought was, which didn't fit. Um the drop top doesn't drop very much, right? Um, the legs are tapered, and uh, there are no vertical pieces going between the aprons and the stretchers. When you go down to Tim's, um, actually, who was the first person that dropped the top a lot? I guess it was Vic. He dropped the top enough to create a, a storage area. Yeah. And since that well, dropped, he he almost didn't really drop the top. Like just he created a new top and, and created a second top. Yeah, he created which a then allowed for that deeper drop for yeah. the next ones. So, um, and, and you, I, I deepened it up. Yeah, so you still have a drop top, and you mirrored that with the um, aprons and 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 a, and a drawer. Who's the first person that put a a, a large drop in the top? I guess it was Brian here. Yeah. Um, Brian created a larger drop. Um, I still think Brian's got the most radical design so far. Yeah. Like that is, and that doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's the most fascinating to me just because it's so different. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he created. It feels very delicate. Yes. He created two tops by creating two tops instead of having one. Um, one top um, yeah. that had a curve in it, or or any matter of fact, the tops aren't even connected in any way. Yeah. Um. So then Jay kept the two tops concept with a a, a, a larger drop, but that drop um, is still pretty subtle. I guess Tim's Tim's Tim is dropped. still two tops. It's just got a an interesting transition. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I worry if the if the sides are nine inches wide, that's eighteen inches. So the space between, um, the flat space in the in the in the center top, is really not going to be that wide. Um, yeah. And so I'm I, just I, looking at what I'm working on right now in the in the hotel room, and I want a table that's. Uh, Three by three, and maybe not even three by three. Yeah. But um, you know, with with my laptop and my mouse, I'm taking up almost that whole thing. 
without feeling scrunched together. So yeah, I that might be the a, a small concern on that. Yeah, I measured it one time, and and I I need almost three feet elbow to elbow. So that could be a that could be a concern. All right, looks like Tim is home and he's trying to get into the trying to get into the hangout. I just resent him an invite so he can come talk to us about this. So yeah, tell him if the if the invite. Uh, Tim, if you're watching, if the invite doesn't show up on when you get onto Google Plus, see if it shows up in your email. And if it shows up in your in your Gmail, uh, get on that way. That's how I had to get on tonight. For some reason, it wasn't showing up in the on the notification little bell on Google Plus. So okay, it's acting acting funky. Yeah, the internet and the Google are broken tonight, which is not fun. So the other thing is that almost all of the legs have had a curve or a taper or a flare. Yeah. Um, this is the first time we've had straight legs. Yeah, it's got a very little taper at the bottom. Yeah. But that's more of that, that mission style. Yeah. Uh, you know, just to define the foot, basically. Yeah, yeah. Which I like that look a lot. I do too. I do too. Um, I also really liked, though. I guess the first time we saw it. Well, Vix legs. I yeah. really liked Vix legs. It almost looks like. It almost looks like that the legs were just tapered, but that they settled. Like the weight settled at the bottom or something. Yeah. Look at the, like a little little pad at the bottom. So. I'm going to try and uh, tech support with uh, Tim here. Make sure he can get in. So Bill's here. Tim has an invite. Let's see. He's listening to the video but trying to figure out how to join. Okay, you have to... Sorry about this. Okay. <clears throat> You'd think we'd want to make joining a hangout a lot easier. Yeah, I don't I really don't understand why the why it's having so much troubles. We have had issues with if people circle you and you circle them after the Hangout's created, they can't join. But I checked that before I created the Hangout. We were both we were both yeah. so I don't know I don't know why that is. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. I wish it would let uh, let me send an invite. Yeah, that's 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 weird. I think maybe we have to make you an admin of the page. Hey Tim, if you haven't, also just go to the uh, to the WoodChat page and see if it pops up on the WoodChat page as well. Sometimes it, it shows up there. Let's see if it's there now. My oh, I'm still screen sharing, and I don't want to do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the it's on there, so and it's shared publicly, so he should be able to should be able to join. So Scott, let's talk about building this thing. Um, let me put it back on here. I, th I think the toughest spot is going to be the transition uh, from from the top down to the to the slope sides, especially between the back top, and because you got three points coming into a weird angle. Oh right, you have the ramp coming up. Yeah, the and then the side top, and then the back top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you'd almost want to make, because it looks like it's drawn as three pieces for that top. Yep. But you'd almost want to make that a solid, you know, um, you'd want to do a, a veneer on a substrate, a plywood type substrate, yeah. to create strength. Yeah. And then you'd almost want to hang the the dropped part off of that, so that would come in 
farther into the sides. Yeah. Of, of those sides, you know. Yeah, and I had. Uh, you'd probably end up building that top upside down. Yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, that would be. It looks like there's no overhang where the, the top doesn't overhang the legs on the front or the side at all. Um, mortise and tenon, obviously, for the aprons to go into the legs. The drawer boxes would not be hard to, to fit in there at all. Um, that it's that top that would be that would be the toughest. Yeah. Um, I mean, your miters would have to be pretty darn good. I would maybe either spline those miters or or do something else to reinforce those miters. But yeah, that that point where the that, that you're right, that point where the back, the side, and the ramp come together. Yeah, you don't. You would also have the um, the side of the inside of the drawer um, box, not the drawer itself, but the the hole for the drawer would be at that point as well. So. Yeah, it would. It would. So you might actually be able to finagle your your angled side into your drawer side and attach the drawer side and then attach the drawer side, the drawer box side to the top. Mm -hmm. Do it that way. If you instead of doing did instead of doing square square drawer fronts, um, if you did the angled drawer front, you could do that ramp piece. Yeah. Differently, and that might help you. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was thinking that too. <laughs> Bill Grigg says he's tired from jointing wood all day and doing it poorly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was he said earlier? If you're not good at jointing, the only thing you're doing is making um, wood thinner. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I did. I did see that. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh... There's truth to that. I've I've had those days, Bill. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> you're not you're not alone. Sometimes even if if you're if you're good at it, it you can still have troubles. So Scott, you when you worked at um, what was Greg's last name? That cabinet shop. Polly. Yeah. Just this is a quick tool tech support question that maybe you can answer. My uh, planer, I got the 15 inch um, planer. I was planing wood. I guess it was this weekend. It seems like it was a really long time ago, but it was Saturday. Cutter heads are locked down with the two screws, right? Wood goes through, everything's going good. It gets to the end of the board and it makes a horrible noise and takes gigantic chunks out of the wood. Completely new behavior for this planer. Right. Now, my planer says after so many hours, open these up, these uh, open up these holes and put oil in there. But like, what do you do when you have a gigantic tool and you need a repairman? I mean, um, it's nice doing it yourself. Find find a local machinery repair repair shop. They'll send a guy out to your shop. Okay. Uh, I had I actually ended up having to do that on um, on two tools, a planer and a joiner, in my own shop back in Michigan, and I I had uh, actually had to have them come out for the table saw too, all Steel City brand. Um, oh, what do you know? <laughs> take that for what it's worth. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, they actually put me in contact with. With the repairman, and but then I used them again uh, multiple times. So, um, yeah, most most machinery repair places, when they deal with in, any type of machinery like that, they will go to the shop because there's a lot of much bigger machinery than even we, what, what we use for woodworking. So, yeah. they'll usually at least send a guy out to look at it. And um, I know when I had my planer fixed, the all the Bearings were packed in wrong, and there's shaving, metal shavings in there. 
So after running a couple hundred board feet through it the first time, um, the planer head started bouncing. And it was leaving a really cool scalloped, scalloped surface. Yeah, that's the hand scraped flooring that everybody's yeah, doing now, right? It was fantastic. I sold it for a lot of money. No, um, yeah, it wasn't good, and it made a horrific noise, too. So he ended up having to take it with him. So he just loaded it in the back of his truck and took it with him. Um, but so that you know, that's an option too. But great. But yeah, I would, I would have someone take a look at it. Have you run anything else through it? Not since then. I just stopped using it because yeah. I didn't, I didn't like the big. Because I've had pieces where they get to the end of the, of the table. Mm hmm. Um, because you you got the two rollers. You got the in feed roller yeah. and you got the out feed roller. Yeah. And when it comes out of that in feed roller, and there's a lot of weight hanging off the back side. Yeah, it can it can pivot on the outfeed roller into the cutter. Yeah. I've had that happen before, yeah. and it does sound terrible. Yeah, and it can take so a typically big typically when I'm planing, when the board gets about halfway, I go to the back side, and I and I hold Pick it down to the, and I hold it down to the table. Yeah. These were only three foot long boards. Yeah, so I should have done that. Yeah, and so uh, I'll, um, I'll have to take a look at it, but. When you, which which one do you have? I have the Grizzly 15-inch spiral cutter head. Okay. And it's been a change. Yeah, never, I've never had that at, on on Greg's. We had. If you look at it, we had an issue where it would it would kick the board sideways once in a while, but. Yeah. Um. These guys are probably expensive, aren't they? To come out to your house and do this. Yeah, you're gonna pay them for by the hour, sometimes. You know, a lot yeah. of times, but. They might not charge you anything to look at it. Yeah. That might be worth something. Um, I, I, I would try and fix it yourself. I'm going to take a look at it, and then if I get if I get in a bad place... When I'm you put it gonna... together, did you um, did you use a, a dial indicator and, and stick okay. it in there and check everything? Yeah. I would go through that and see if, if that's it. Also, check if the, uh, the chip... Uh, the chip breaker, yeah, the, or the orange piece. That's yeah. They're usually orange. Yeah, it's in front of the cutter. See if somehow that got too far out of the way, or, or your outfeed roller moved. Yeah. Um, I did. I have had where, at least on my Steel City, there was the the little Allen wrench adjustments for the outfeed roller. There's in-feed and out-feed adjustments yeah. to increase the height to depth. I've had those where they came loose, so that outfeed roller dropped. But it might have gone the other way, where it raised the outfeed roller up too high, so that yeah. there's nothing holding it down. Yeah, not looking for it. Not looking forward to that. I hate them. I I hate tuning a planer and a joiner. Yeah. I just It's an agonizing. Joiner is easier. Yeah, unless unless your table beds are yeah out of, out of whack, then they're eesh. yeah. But that's the one thing. That I'm, if I get some like a couple more big jobs, then I'm gonna have to get a planer and joiner again. Cause right now, I'm just borrowing. I'll go over to Greg's shop and borrow his shop planer and yeah. joiner once in a while, or or go to another buddy's shop, but. That gets that gets tiring too, going to someone else's shop and yeah. You know. Yeah. But it's the one thing I don't look forward to of getting a planer and joiner in my shop again is the, the upkeep and maintenance. I hate it. You you've thought about getting a combo machine, right? I've thought about it, but I think there's to get a good one that I'm gonna not hate using, <laughs> it's gonna be four four or five grand. And I just I can spend a lot less on on the two individual machines. So, what's weird is I'm thinking about just getting a joiner and not even bothering with the planer, mm -hmm. because basically I just use the joiner as a as a top feed planer. Um, obviously, you can get you know if if you do it wrong, you can screw it up and put things out of whack. But I just think someone to take some material off quickly, and then I can clean it back up with planes. Mm -hmm. so, the joiner almost—it seems weird, but it almost makes more sense for me. 
but I can see that. Um, a lot of the wood you buy isn't isn't dimensioned, right? Right. I would. It would be nice to have both again, but yeah, we'll see. All right, I'm still I'll trying to get Tim in here. That's so weird. I don't understand why it sometimes I don't, just doesn't I don't show understand. up. He's in our team member circle. Um, somebody drive by? Oh, here? Yeah. yeah I've got the window open. The, the road's right out there. Someone, someone gotcha. buying a motorcycle. So. Oh, why isn't Google letting Tim in? We might just have to bag it and go for next week. Yeah. Which stinks. Um, let me see. I don't know if I don't know if Tim heard me say check check his email. Let's see if he got an invite in the email. Yeah, did you send an invite when you first? Uh, I've sent him like five right invites. I've sent him five in invites. Yeah, because from the email you can join. There should be a button that says. Uh, join Hangout. Mm -hmm. um, he's not on a, a iPad, is he? Oh, let's find out. Because we found that out with uh, Justin Lee a couple weeks back that it wasn't wasn't liking the iPads for. I think it has more to do with the WeChat on air than just yep. regular. Yeah. Regular WeChat. Or Hangout on airs. I mean. So. Hangout on air. Yeah. yeah. See, I I still can't get the um, Hangout toolbox working. I can doesn't. get it work to work on Firefox. I can't get it to work on Chrome. They built it. I mean, they didn't test it on their own browser. What is going I don't on? Know. But I mean, it's it's two different teams, I guess. Maybe that's just I don't know if that's a justification. But. Yeah. So. Now you you work for a big company. You know how sometimes one one hand oh, doesn't yes, talk the other. <laughs> But when we do that kind of stuff, we ask ourselves, what the heck are we doing? Fix, Let's fix it. Let's fix it. So, all right, I don't know if we're going to be able to get Tim in. So okay. let me see if there's any other. Uh... Yeah, I'm talking about machine repair. That. That was honestly one of the biggest motivating factors for me for going more of the hand tool route. Um, I, yeah. Even as much as I love my band saws, or well, one of my band saws, the other one I, I could care less about. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Hold on, finish. I got, I got, I got. Yeah. Good news. I want to share with you. I, uh, I, I hate tuning a band saw. It's just. Yeah. So much tuning a machine up is just. Agonizing for me. Tuning a plane up, not a problem. Yeah. I just I hate tuning up power tools. I hate it. I hate sanding inside corners. Oh. I mean, that's why now I sand everything before I glue up. I put tape down, blue tape, you know, so that the glue squeeze out doesn't get anywhere. Um, okay, so I, what I was going to tell you, so we talked a lot about bandsaw blades recently. Um, Laguna and all this stuff, and the, uh, yeah. the wood slicer from Highland Woodworking. And I feel like my bandsaw, you know, it doesn't track, right? Like I go, I'm cutting a straight line, and it's, it wants to w go all over the place, and um, uh, and I feel like it's just not really cutting through the wood very well. Well, I had a wood slicer. I just hadn't put it on, right? I had yeah. a stock blade that came... Um, with my Grizzly, which is, I, I, I'm, I think I'm just going to uh, wrap it up carefully and, and, and get rid of the damn thing because it's probably not worth setting up for sharpening. So 
this weekend I had to resaw these um, these, these 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 pieces of fur. And so I said, okay, before I do this, I'm going to put on this new blade. And so I went through, you know, adjusting all the roller guides and da da da. da put on the new blade. Freaking amazing! It like it's a three TPI wood slicer, but it just cuts. It just goes. Yeah. It's still not at the point where I can use my fence and just push and get a straight line. Yeah. Like there's some stuff I want to do there, and I do want to clean off the wheels because there's some there's some stuff on the there's like makes a difference sawdust on the wheels, but the blade made a ridiculous difference. Yeah. Um, one one thing, do not cut curves with that blade if you can at all avoid it. Why is that? It won't cut as straight anymore. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. That well, that's how I, I, I was think thinking I, of getting a I was thinking of getting one that was smaller anyway. This is a yeah. This is a three eighths or a half inch. Half inch. But what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this one. I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna find out how uh, wide of a blade my bandsaw can handle. I'm gonna order one of those. And I'm gonna figure out which the smallest one I can handle. I'm gonna order one of those. So I'll use the wide one for resawing and the narrow one for curves. Yeah, the middle one that I have on there now, I'll use for just kind of general purpose stuff. But don't the wood slicers only come in half inch and one inch? I don't know. And if and if and if I can't find a wood slicer in that, I'll get some other. Yeah, I'll get some other one. So I'll end up having three blades for the bandsaw. But my father. We put, a, we put a new timber wolf in the in the saw for the video. Yeah. Um, that was pretty decent for okay. doing curves and stuff. Okay. Um. My father-in-law used to work at a uh, butcher shop when he was a kid, and you should see that guy fold a bandsaw blade. Yeah. He doesn't okay. step on it. He does this weird thing where he just goes, boop, and <laughs> no problem, he has no problem with it. So then the other thing I was going to tell you is I'm doing the, mortise and the, ten the mortises and the tenons for this um, stained glass window frame, and I've, I got a jet floor standing uh, mortiser. I got a ridiculous deal on a brand new one a few years ago. Yeah. So mort mortises are great. Love doing mortises, no problem. Um, okay, so now he says, "I'm on the Woodchat Google Plus page. Where's the join button?" Yeah, I don't. I, this is just not going to check your email. Let's let's see if the email is going to work. Are you talking to him on email or on on Twitter? Um, on Twitter. Okay. So. I cut the mortises with my um, floor standing mortiser. It does a great job. They're clean. I, I usually clean them up a little bit because you get fuzzies in there and things like that. Then I do my tenons um, on my table saw, but my new route to happiness with doing tenons is I don't worry about cutting perfect tenons on the table saw. I just get it close. And, um, and then I just clean it up with my... Um, Low angle, I think it's the number 60, rabbiting block plane with the knickers. Yeah. And then, you know, the cheeks are cut on the table saw, but to cut the, sh but to cut the ends, yeah. just hand saw them. Just dry fit, everything just works perfectly. Because yeah. there's so many times where I'm trying to dial in perfect um, perfect tenons on the table saw, and you end up cutting them too loose. Yeah, it's, it's not it's worth it. It's easier. It's yep. so easy. That that rabbiting block plane is fantastic. It's it is. It's, it is. it's the one metal body plane that that I would. I can't make a. Uh, there's one. I guess it's one of them, but um, that I can't make a, a match for in a wood plane. So, really? I could ma I could make a blade that would go to the sides and everything, but I don't know if it'll work as well because you got more mass. In the smaller package with the, ah. with that little metal body one, um, and I can't do a low angle like that, so it won't. You know, it, my block plane is is still comfortable with a 37 degree in a palm, but the way you're having to use a, a routing block plane to clean up tenons and stuff, I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could make it comfortable to use. Yeah. But. So he's on an iPad, so he's not going to be able to join. Ah, uh, yep, that's the iPad. Oh, so that's the that's the answer there. Yep. Oh, okay. 
Um, well, we're already over time, and it sounds like you're tired and you have filming to do, so why don't we just wrap it up? We'll see if we can get Tim Charles on next week. Okay. Eric, um, I don't know how to say your last name, Eric. It's, I think it's Boucher or, or uh, Bouchy will join us. He's going to be next. So next week we'll try and power through any comments or questions on Tim's, and we'll go over Eric's design. I think it's a good idea. Cool. All right. Uh, I, I think uh, we'll uh, we'll just have to make it known from here on out that the iPads just aren't, yeah. aren't feasible on, on we'll chat on there. So. But it's good to know. All righty. Let me just make sure everybody knows. Keep typing Alice instead of a slice. <laughs> Oh, he says he's not on iPad. Oh. Well, well then I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea why it's not working. A, a test run with him next week. So. Yeah. yeah. So he says no. Um, I, I think next time we can try to, um, and obviously it didn't work out to get him in before, before I joined, but... I think we found that if the guests join first before the regulars, it helps too. Okay. So. Cool. All right, everybody. Well, so we're going to call it tonight for Wood Chat for August 14th, 2013. We had some problems getting Tim Charles a slice of wood into the Hangout. Um, we'll try again next week. Um, if you're on an iPad, you can't you can't join the Hangout. Um, also next week, we're going to be visiting with Eric, who's going to go over his design. Um, we do this every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific and 10 p.m. Eastern over at uppercutwoodworks.com slash woodchat slash chatroom. Um, and uh, it, remember that even though the Woodchat Hangout is ending for the night, Woodchat is 24-7 on Twitter. Just use hashtag Woodchat, and uh, I'm sure one of the friendly Woodchatters will uh, answer your question or review your design or whatever other kind of help you're looking for. Last week we did a tool recommendation, and um, Jim actually went out and bought himself a new nice Bosch um, barrel handle jigsaw. So... So that's it for us. Scott, you want to say good night and remind people where they can go to buy awesome wooden hand planes? ScottMakeWoodworks.com. Right on. All right, everybody. We will see you next week. That is it for tonight. Thanks, everybody. See you guys.